Let's go, let's go. Power Hour LSU. Can you believe what Herbie said today? That Derek Stingley Jr. is his Heisman pick. At the end of today's video, there is one more thing that Derek Stingley has to prove at LSU. And it's something that we don't talk a whole lot about. So if you're a true LSU fan, you will understand that I am watching over my girlfriend's parents' dogs as they are away on vacation. And I didn't have time to edit a super fancy video, even though I brought all my equipment. This is just going to be a very raw video. So let's, let's do this. Comment below. If you think Derek Sningley Jr. can win the Heisman, type Y for yes, type N for no. So, I think he can. I really do. He's 100 to 1 to win the Heisman Trophy right now. And I like that Herbie, who is the foremost national college football commentator, who, by the way, gave a great speech on racial inequality, also in the same episode stood up for defensive players. I mean, Derek Stingley Jr. is going to get real hype when Kirk Herbstreet says that he deserves that real hype. So, is he the best player in college football? Yes. Especially if you're factoring in just defensive players. Now, I know some people will say Marvin Wilson at Florida State. I mean, there's so many different guys that you can mention. But Derek Stingley Jr. is that dude. So, you know, now that Jamar Chase has departed, it's clear that Derek Singley Jr. is the top player that's returned to LSU football. He's got this hype. I just read the Adam Kramer Bleacher Report article from him. And Joe Burrow was in the piece saying that Derek Singley Jr. would have been a first-round pick if he was allowed to enter the NFL draft. Now, if you watched our very last episode, we included this shot of Derek Stingley Jr. with Ed Orgeron and in this last episode you saw uh, that I make the case that Derek Stingley Jr. should have been allowed to go pro. I think all college athletes that have a first round grade should be allowed to go get that money but if you want to hear that you can watch that episode. So yeah Derek Stingley Jr. definitely can win the Heisman. The first thing that needs to happen, though, we do need to make sure that he has solidified himself as the punt returner for LSU. And, you know, obviously the only defensive back to ever win the Heisman was Charles Woodson back in 98, and he was also the punt returner at LSU and at LSU at Michigan. Charles Woodson's one of my favorite college football players ever. I have a headliner of him, and... A headliner is like a little bobblehead figurine of him still in the box at my house. I wish I had it here to show you. But, you know, Derek Singley Jr. is every bit as talented as Charles Woodson. Also, this college football season, if we get through it, it's going to be weird. So, why not have it be a defensive player that wins the Heisman Trophy? And, of course, LSU is going to have a bunch of marquee matchups. So, now that he's got the Herbie hype, now that he is coming off, you know, this national championship season where he was first-team All-American, where PFF had Derek Stingley Jr. as the highest-rated defensive back ever in college football, the best-ranked season ever. So, I find all of that to be so fascinating when you look at Derek Stingley Jr. Um, you know, Ed Orgeron did talk about him playing offense. That would obviously help his Heisman, Heisman, Heisman odds, Heis, 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 his Heisman odds. This is where we would do a, a quick cut, zoom in, Heisman. Anyway, it would help out his Heisman odds if, you know, he did get some snaps on offense. Maybe that happens, you know. Who's to say that, you know, with everything that's going on, the entire receiver room gets infected or the entire running back room gets infected? You know, why not let Derek Singley Jr. play those positions? He definitely has the capability of doing that. So, yeah, the Heisman hype is there. It is well-deserved. 
he definitely has the capability of getting it. He's also a defensive back at LSU. You got that DBU moniker. If you were to have, you know, a special season, you would have Patrick Peterson and Tyron Matthew definitely push that campaign. You know, I look at someone like Trevor Lawrence, who's two to one. Well, you know, Trevor Lawrence last year had two 300-yard passing games. Let me repeat that. Trevor Lawrence had two 300-yard passing games. Uh, I think Joe Burrow last year only had two games where he didn't throw for 300 yards. So, you know, I get it. Trevor Lawrence is great, but the hype is probably a little too much, especially with ETN also being in that backfield. If the Big Ten doesn't have the season, that takes Justin Fields out of the equation. I don't... And I know Joe Burrow came out of nowhere last year, but you look at some of the top SEC quarterbacks, you know, who is there? I mean, obviously you have Mac Jones and whatnot, but this Heisman race is going to be wide open, and it has been for quite some time. And over the last few years, it has been a Heisman long shot. Heisman, that's such a weird word for me. I don't know why. The last couple of years... There's been a Heisman long shot that has won the award. So, I uh, I can see it happening. I might be weird. I might be in the minority. I might be, you know, a uh, super biased LSU fan. But if more players opt out and, you know, offenses aren't in sync and Derek Stingley Jr. locks down his side of the field, you know... Does he need interceptions to help his stock? Because they're obviously not going to throw it to his side of the field all that much. Then, you know, that might hurt it. But still, we have PFF. We have all these uh, data analytics that better uh, that that better shows Heisman odds. Uh, Eric Crocker and some other defensive back Twitter uh, gurus out there. They they. There's metrics for all of this now. So maybe those metrics become more palpable. Is that a word? Or it becomes more widespread and people actually learn that this dude is actually the real deal. I know it's weird that our normal videos have cuts and fancy graphics and whatnot. But, uh, but yeah, this one's a little bit different. Bear with me. So, Derek Singley Jr., Kirk Herbstreet picks him to win the Heisman. He would be a first-round pick right now. He's a great kid, great attitude. Ed Orgeron loves him. He goes about his business. Uh, his backstory is amazing. His granddad was paralyzed in the NFL in a preseason game, and his dad was drafted by the Phillies and played defensive back, played arena defensive back, and... He, I, he does a lot of Baton Rouge hits on the radio with my dude T-Bob. So his backstory is amazing. He was backpedaling at the age of four, Derek Stingley Jr. He was already starting to learn how to walk backwards. So he was made to be this ridiculous defensive back. Was offered by Les Miles in the ninth grade and was a true freshman, All-American, probably the best true freshman year we've ever seen at LSU at any position. So, what else does he have to prove? Well, it's quite simple. In order to prove yourself to be the best, you have to beat the best. Now, I know LSU went undefeated last year. And I know Derek Stingley Jr. was ridiculously dominant against Clemson, against Auburn, which both teams have quite a few NFL receivers. But against Alabama, that was the only game where he kind of got torched, so let's be honest. So, you know, I love Sting. But this is what greats do. I'm sure he's already got the game circled on his bulletin board. So, 
what happened against Alabama? So he started off the game really strong in the first quarter, but then in the second quarter, he got burned for a deep touchdown by Devonta Smith. Now, we've talked about Devonta. He's from Amy, Louisiana, and a lot of people have different opinions about him. But, you know, Devonta burned him on that touchdown. It was kind of weird. It was, it was kind of a trick play. Alabama caught LSU looking towards the sideline, and he burned him. So that happens. It was a trick. He got tricked. Whatever. But then in the second half, Devonta got the better half of him. And there's a good video on YouTube by an account named Verify DBs, and I counted four times on four different types of routes that Devonta Smith got the better of Derek Stingley Jr. Now remember, the Alabama game is the most important game on the schedule. And that was arguably LSU's toughest game. So, a lot of you remember LSU got the late touchdown to put them back up by two possessions. On the very first play, Dave Aranda decided to call a bump and run coverage and they let uh, our boy Sting go man coverage against Devonta Smith and Devonta Smith burned him for an 80-yard touchdown. And it was, there wasn't any looking over to the sideline. There wasn't any of that. It was... You know, just one guy burning the other guy. So, you know, I'm not picking on uh, Derek Seagley Jr. He was incredible. He was freaking ridiculous. And he was actually pretty good against Alabama in the first half. But, you know, greats want to prove themselves. Some of the best football that Patrick Peterson played was against Alabama. So, you know, that's the only thing. That's the only thing he has to prove. And guess what? Devonta Smith is back this year for Alabama. He had the opportunity to go pro, so we're going to get part two of that matchup this year, and it's one of the things that I'm actually really excited about as we look towards this year. So, you know, I know I say this all the time. You know, Derek Singley Jr. has nothing else to prove. He is a first-round draft pick. He should be allowed to go to the NFL. But as a college player, he does have one more thing to prove. Can he play this ridiculously dominant elite coverage against the hardest team on LSU's schedule? Boom! Boom, boom, boom. Wow. Great video today. I know it's kind of weird because, once again, no fancy cuts. I'm not even wearing an LSU shirt. I'm wearing a New Orleans Pelican shirt. Just relax. And I hope you guys all relax before the season begins, okay? Because obviously when the LSU season hits, we're going to be in high gear. Hopefully um, we're doing live shows by then. Once again, uh, we won't hit those live shows until we get the 400 subscribers. Look where we are right now. 337. So, I don't know if that actually showed 337. But we're at 337 subscribers. Let's do a comment shout out we do it every video let's see i had it pulled up here don't forget uh if you want to follow me on twitter at carter the power and while i pull up this comment let me see i got a really special video coming up for you football cards i know i showed you my joe burrow rookie prism a little bit earlier so take a look at this justin jefferson blue rookie prism I also have DJ Chark. I'm shooting this with one hand. Leonard Fournette. I have a Grant Delpit. And I have two Odell Beckham Jr. So I got a really cool LSU card video uh, coming up for you here pretty soon. So, this is Kevin. What's up, Kevin? Got Kevin Kimbrough here. And uh, this is after our Jamar Chase video from last week uh, our Jamar Chase and Tyler Shelvin video still can beat everyone on the schedule even with them leaving next man up true freshmen have played significant roles like Ed Ingram Sadiq Charles, Derek Stingley Grant Delpit, Justin Vincent and so on so shout out to you Kevin, thanks for the support and I agree, 
I mean, LSU's going to need a lot of true freshmen to step up. Um, I'm kind of interested to see who plays more next year. Uh, Kayshawn Boutte or Coy Moore. I wonder, because I've heard both of those guys have been just killing it in camp right now. So, let me know what you think in the comment section. Let me know, obviously, what you thought of today's video. I know it's a little bit more relaxed and like this. So, I hope you guys watched it all. Enjoying just uh, a mini vacation here. It's Power Hour LSU. Boom. Bob.